Hey, what's up, you two? My name is Dewan Lightfoot. Today, I'm here with Jossie Linjay. Yeah, Jossie Linjay. Yeah, and we're going to be discussing his career as a software developer, his journey into the field, and how he's killing on YouTube. What's up, man? What's up, man? It's good to see you. Hey, good to see you, too. So, Ohio's in the building. Where are you from? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, yep. Ohio. 216? 216. Oh, man. Killing the it. Land. <laughs> the land is in the building. That's what's up. So, how'd you get started in tech? So, I got started in tech because really my dad pushed me into STEM. Um, he just knew that it was a clear career path. I can make good money, have like good job security. And I always was really interested in like math and science. Nice. So um, I ended up kind of throwing spaghetti at, at the wall and um, applied to a bunch of engineering schools and then landed on computer science. Mm, engineering school. So you went to college? Yep. Yep. Went to Ohio University. Go Bobcats. Yeah. Go Bobcats. <laughs> you know Gary Bush? G Bush? Uh, no, I don't actually. Uh, so he's um he was a defensive end. I went to high school with him. Okay. At Ohio University. Now he's like doing radio and all types of things with the Browns on oh, the radio really? and stuff like that. Yeah, the journalism school OU is amazing. Yeah, actually. yeah, he's doing yeah. the same. Awesome. That's so that's what's up. Cool. So you went to college for computer science. Yes. Got your first job. What was it? Full stack developer. I uh, was an intern. That was that was my first job. Full stack C sharp <laughs> desktop applications. Wow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> taking a look back uh -huh. at how you got started, would you have gone to college? Yes, me personally. Um, I just always enjoyed the idea of college. And I also initially went to college for sports. Mm. So it was always in my, in my, my frame of mindset was I was going to take my academics and my athletics to get me to school. Nice, nice. Okay, would you pay for college? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to have like scholarship money right. um, where school didn't, didn't cost that, didn't cost too much. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it was worth it for me. Okay. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking is because for someone that wants to get started as a software developer, mm -hmm. what's the best path? What's the best path? I think it depends on who you are. Um, you have to be very introspective and open and honest with who you are as a person, how you, what your study habits are, okay. what discipline, what's your like, your tolerance for, I don't want to say misunderstanding, but your tolerance for like learning, like can you sit for 10 hours and just look at, you know, programming or something complex and not get too frustrated to the point where you want to give up. Um, right. I, I, yeah, so and that's a yeah. long one to answer, but it really depends. Like if you need the structure, school is good. Right. If you don't need the structure, I definitely think you can be self-taught. Ah, uh, so if you're somebody that you can sit down and learn on your own, mm -hmm. what about a learning plan? How would you establish a learning plan for somebody learning that plan. is self, wants to be self-taught? Self-taught, okay. The first thing I always tell people is build your own website. Oh, Learn nice. HTML, CSS, a little bit of JavaScript. But basically, you can build a website that doesn't have any functionality and everything's all static and you can learn the fundamentals of programming. Because as you know, when it comes to programming, it's not always about the very complex algorithms. It's right. about, OK, I built something. How do I let the world see it? Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, there's a saying that someone told me a lot of times people will say um, it's not who you know. It's not. Who, who you know yeah. well, I, I forget how I know by the way yeah. it's not who you know or what you know but who you know right? yeah yeah know what you know it's about who you but know. from what from what it seems in today's age it's not who you know but who knows you yes. so part of what you're saying is put yourself out there put yourself out there learn all facets of development right you have your pre-release which is like programming um building algorithms and then once you release your software your website you have to learn how how am i going to do a domain name right. how do i deploy the website those are all very important skill sets that people get paid a lot of money to do specializing nice so should you do that in the cloud like what what do you have to focus on the cloud to learn mm -hmm. these skills no you definitely don't have to learn the cloud i think the best thing is really to learn fundamentals so learn like HTML, CSS, and okay. then learn um, an object-oriented programming language. Gotcha. Learn like, um, you know, C++ or Java. Um, I can't remember if Python, <laughs> and now I feel like I'm not valid like, as a CompSci nah, grad, bad, but learn bad. Python yeah. or something like that. And then you can build off of that. 
it, it's funny because like the higher you go, the more you're in the field. Like the fundamental things of how to get started, yeah. it changes so it changes much. A lot, and you're you're kind of focused on where you are and where you want to go. Yeah, you know. But the good thing is that there's people coming behind us mm -hmm. that are putting out that information. Right. Is there anybody that you watch or follow that you will recommend? Oh man, um, I think it's Code Academy. Okay. Um, Code Academy or Academind. Oh, gotcha. I'm pretty sure. Um, he has a lot of really amazing courses okay. that um, teach you the fundamentals of programming in a very practical way. Like nice. maybe you want to build a website that has a sticky header is what we like to say, where you scroll down a web page, but your header, your navigation bar is still present and visible. So that's that's just one example. But then he also can help you uh, learn um, how to think for a technical interview and understanding yeah, yeah. complex algorithm questions. Right. Yeah. You mentioned something in one of your videos about the way software engineer interviews are structured. Oh yeah. And how it kind of yes. removes the creativity of yeah. the actual job. Yeah. What does an actual job as a software developer look like? Yeah, the actual job of a software developer is not necessarily time box, especially not to the magnitude of like one hour. It's more collaborative. Mm. It's also all about searching. Like right. a big part of being a software engineer is understanding how to search for your answers right. and how to filter out things that aren't helpful. Right. That's why with coding interviews, I do understand the purpose of them to understand like your cognitive ability, how fast you can think, you know, also it's like a weed out process, which is pretty common in STEM. What I don't like about it is it doesn't allow you to showcase what it would be like to working with you as a developer. Those are two totally different things. Being good at algorithms and also being a good developer for a company, I feel like are two different things. Mm, I, I could see that. I could see that because in network engineering, the things that you're testing on isn't always the same as actually what you do. Yes. Like the routing protocols, BGP, EIGRP, aren't what you actually be doing in an environment because you could be working on the LAN, WAN, all these other things. But we're talking about you. So I can talk <laughs> about network engineering all day just like you can talk about software development. Yep. Now, your first job. Yeah. For someone that wants to get started, where would you start when it comes to applying for jobs? Applying to jobs. So what I would do is I would take, like write down what your skill sets are or just simply create your resume where they're um, easy to uh, to view. And I would try to filter out job, filter jobs based on your skill sets. You could even go as far as typing JavaScript developer, C Sharp developer. And then you can also filter like based on your experience. So if you're a new grad, you can do um, uh, is it, I'm totally blanking on uh, what <laughs> that new role a uh, new role is um, not a new role but you're like earlier in your career junior, junior yeah like yeah, a junior role junior itchy level or mm -hmm. something like that yep and that's and that's honestly where I'd start and I'd apply to a bunch of different companies like not necessarily all just the best companies I'd apply to different companies and also definitely consider working at um, like non-tech companies mm -hmm. That's it, because a lot of them smaller companies that may be non-tech, yes. you actually do more things and get more exposure. Yeah, you do get a lot of exposure. Um, also, a lot of those companies need developers and people aren't running to your local bank <laughs> right. to work as a developer there. Right. But that might be a great place for you to start okay. and gain really valuable experience. Awesome. Now, what about a fang? A lot of people yeah. will mang or wh whatever yeah. it is today. <laughs> Man, <laughs> fang, <yeah. laughs> for people that are looking to work at those big companies, the best companies, yeah. do you recommend that? Should they start there? Will they really get the experience they're expecting yeah. at those companies? I mean, I'm definitely going to say if you can get into a, a mang or a fang, you, you should do it. One, right. you're going to make like life changing money. Okay. You know, stock options, all these things that are really viable. And I'm thinking from solely an investment perspective, right. like in your 20s, if you could get that type of job yeah. and get access to stock and your 401k, but yeah. pretty much every company does 401k, yeah. I definitely would consider it. The main thing though, I think you should look at is what team are you going to work on and what product you're going to be working on? That's what honestly dictates your experience. If you're working on a really fun team um, that are working on a very like um, influential or like important product that right. the business is backing, I think right. that'll give you a really good experience. And so what you're saying is when you're applying for these jobs and if you happen to land an interview, yep. these are some of the questions you should be asking. Yep, because you should interview them as well. Make sure that it aligns with what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I can think back in my career earlier, mm -hmm. like you're way further thinking than I was at, at your age. But 
it, it's a blessing to see. Yes. But back then, I was thinking, I just wanted an opportunity. Right, right. And not realizing what may come with that opportunity mm -hmm. or if the opportunity is best for where I want to go. Right. So yeah. how can someone actually determine wh what are the best opportunities for them? I guess you would think about what you're looking for. Like, is there a city you want to move to? Is there a tech stack that you want to focus on um, building with? Because yeah. if you're going to be working on a product in a programming language that you hate, you're going to be miserable, even if you're living in a really cool city because you spend so much time, yeah. you know, programming and at work. Yeah. Um, maybe some people don't care. I'm, I'm a person that I really I want to enjoy my work. So yes. I think just think about what brings you joy. But when you're early in your career, it's not always going to be like that. <laughs> I'm still early in my career, but when I first started, I worked in a tech set that I didn't particularly care for. Right. But I took the initiative to uh, to make sure that they were parts of my job that I could enjoy more. Yeah. Like I liked UX, for example. My job was full stack, not front end, but I was a UX champion. It was basically like this volunteer, like extra work where I would collaborate with other um, UX champions in the UX team to figure out what's the best way to build the best experience for our product it wasn't the core part of my job and I didn't particularly care for that the, the core part of my job but that yeah. made it worthwhile that's good yep. that's good that's good for those that are watching that are getting started maybe on a journey yep. what advice do you have for them Josh? so one thing that comes to mind is my friend Mayuko has as another software engineering creator had this really good phrase and or this idea of it is important to do jobs that you don't particularly care for. That way you can figure out what you actually want to do. And I was uh, and I was no. listening to <laughs> my voice just cracked. Cool. I was listening to that when I was working at a company that I did enjoy, but I felt stuck because I couldn't switch to the role I wanted to because it didn't exist there. Yeah. And I just wasn't very happy with what I was doing. And yeah. But I remember listening to that and I was like, okay, there's value in doing a job that you don't particularly care for. Because one thing I've learned in this short amount of time is you'll look back and you're probably going to be really grateful for those experiences you had. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing, you made a video about say yes. And I, I was like, to, yeah. you know what? I used to say yes to everything. Yeah. But I reached a point in my life where I had to say no. Yeah. Because what I found, and you can correct me if you had the same experience or if yours is different, but what I found is that a lot of times distractions aren't always bad. They're the good things that look like opportunities mm -hmm. because they may distract you from where you actually want to go and actually what you want to do. Yes. Have you ever experienced that? Yes. When I was applying for developer advocacy roles, mm. I was really tempted to just apply to software engineering roles that I was familiar with and comfortable with, yes. or just applying to a role that's adjacent to what I want to do at a company I really like. Yeah. And I had to say no to that because I knew ultimately that wasn't my long-term goal. Gotcha. My long-term goal was to be in DevRel, which meant that I could only apply to companies that had that role yeah. or, and then narrow down the companies that I actually think I want to work for. Because yeah. it can get really exciting to be like, hey, I'm just going to apply to Google, Amazon, Facebook, all the top companies because right. that's what's sexy. Yeah. But that may not actually align with what you're looking for. True, yeah. true. You're on social media. He's, you got 167,000 people following you on YouTube. Yeah. Do you believe that your YouTube channel helped you get to where you are? It did. How I found out about DevRel was from other influencers like yourself on Twitter. And I remember you mentioning that. And then um, other creator friends of mine are developer evangelists or advocates. So I definitely think it, it, it helped me get to where I am now. Nice, nice. Do you recommend others start some type of blog? Yeah. YouTube? I think everyone has a story to tell. I okay. just say, make sure when you start out, you bring value. Yeah. A lot of people like to just blog in the beginning. And unless you're like, have this really interesting life that's very unique or <laughs> yeah. you make a ton of money and you just like on oh, private jets and yeah. stuff, <laughs> it makes more sense to build an audience that gravitates to you because you're bringing some value to them. I love that. I love that. Hey. Jossie, yeah. thank you for coming on today. Oh, nice meeting you in Yo. person and, and doing this interview. Yes, I wish you nothing but peace and blessings yeah. thank from you. now until thank the rest you. of your life, man. Thank you. God thank bless, you. man. Yeah. All right, take care, everybody. Peace.